All right. Hey, everybody. Today is November 29th. This is the KCP community meeting. If you are interested in adding anything to the agenda, the issue is 2428 up on the screen here. And um, I, given that I just created this issue uh, a couple of minutes ago, it does not have anything on the agenda. But uh, I know David had mentioned pre-recording uh, that he's got a demo that he can show. So uh, David, are you ready for that? Um, yes, I uh, at least I prepared that. Okay. It's a, bit, um, uh, it's a bit on the fly, but um, well, we'll hope that the the you know demo gods are with you today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so over to you. Yeah. So uh, I would. Yeah, let me know that. Sure. So I would demo um, what I call uh, coordination controllers and coordination controller helpers. If uh, for some of you that that you know are uh, on KCP for some time, uh, there was initially something called the deployment splitter, and the goal of this was mainly that you put a deployment uh, into a workspace and it would be spread among two sync targets, two physical clusters. Maybe half replicas would go in one sync one sync target and the other replica uh, in the other sync target. And uh, it would be sort of, you know, magically um, every deployment on every physical cl cluster would be, you know, uh, started with the number of replicas. And then there would be uh, some sort of summarization, mainly uh, the status of the deployment in KCP would mainly contain the sum of all the replicas uh, of on on the two scene targets. That was something that was working, you know, uh, with a very different implementation as what we have today, uh, mainly really prototypish and and hacky. And uh, now um, that um, a number of you know um, that work on transformations on maintaining uh, sinker specific views of an object um, for every resource which is synced to one of our several sync targets based on this work um, it was possible to uh, rebuild the deployment splitter uh, as a what we call a coordination controller so i will mainly just show you quick very quickly uh, some code and that would be mainly the you know, sort of model for uh, coordination controllers um, uh, in the future. And obviously, we could have coordination controllers for PVCs, for example. PVCs and PVs uh, prepare the PVC, link it to the right PV, and move it to a distinct location, for example. All, all these things that will take care of some resource, prepare the resource for syncing according to the right place, the right sync target. And possibly delay the syncing or you know uh, change the status. Even for ingresses, for example, you would take the status of the ingress as it is um, on the physical cluster, and obviously change the status in the KCP object because you want to you don't want to leak the URLs uh, of the physical cluster, but you want to provide your own URLs. Uh, for example, that's what. Uh, the the hybrid cloud gateway has been doing also uh, its own way uh, in the past. So all these type of, of controllers are coordination controllers. They prepare the KCP resources for syncing and they get the result of the syncing to update the main um, uh, KCP, res the main resource in KCP. And finally, what we have um, in such coordination controller is sort of two queues or two uh, reconciliation in the two directions. One from the KCP object to uh, this, what we could call the sinker view, what the sinker will see and will try to sync. That's mainly what I have in the process upstream view here. I get my deployment uh, here, you know, on a given works, KCP workspace. And I get the syncing intents mainly um, the various sync targets to which I would like to sync this object uh, here. And based on that, I would prepare some diff annotation. So for now, it's experimental, but there would be 
in the future are much more ways to define transformations uh, on objects on resources to be synced for now it's just uh, you know experimental annotation but the main point is that for every sync target to which this resource will be synced you would uh, create a patch here i know uh, um, uh, an annotation to instruct that in fact you don't want the total number of, of replicas but just uh, a number of replicas which corresponds to um, the number total number of replicas divided by the number of sync targets mainly just spread the replicas among the sync targets and so let's just put the annotation on every uh, for one annotation for every sync target that we want to sync on and then uh, just update the deployment that's typically just some the typical thing that a coordination controller would do prepare uh, transformations that will be applied so that every syncer through the virtual workspace will see its own version of uh, the deployment with its dedicated number of, of replicas and the other way around is when i get an object from the syncer that has been synced by the syncer the status has been updated by the syncer but obviously syncer a which would update its own status with the available replicas syncer b as well those two statuses would in fact go into a syncer view which is implemented as an annotation but you have some helpers here for the coordination controller that allows you to get all the syncer views for a given object for my deployment and for example if the deployment has been synced to two sync targets as i will show you just after then i can get the sync of views mainly the deployment as it was returned by each syncer so syncer a returned a deployment with four four replicas um four available replicas in the status syncer b maybe three replicas in the status and then i will construct the status of the main kcp resource of the upstream kcp resource just by summer by summing uh, all the replicas uh, of all that were reported by every thinker, by each thinker. The same for conditions as well. I would merge the conditions um, of the, of the various. Um, uh, yes. Um, well, where the thinker views are maintained, are they stored somewhere? Yes, they are stored. I mean, currently they are stored on annotations uh, on the main uh, KCP resource. Uh, it's, I mean, mainly in the TMC case to have everything self-contained on one resource, which is much easier, obviously, to manage when you delay the resource, for example. You don't have to, you know, garbage collect some other object that would be related. But in full generality, it's just an implementation detail. You could, you know, store those things somewhere else for, you know, scaling purposes or for any other purposes. But obviously, the, the implement implementation would be, you know, a bit more, a bit more uh tricky but you know and we could even abstract this the the main mechanism would be the same does it answer yeah thank you yeah. so mainly with those two uh, reconcile uh functions uh you can achieve what i'm going to show you now so here let me just create a user workspace okay it already exists perfect i will go inside it user get the climate. okay so um let me first show you Uh, do you see my uh, screen big enough maybe not i can read it it's saying that you don't have the deployment type known there yes by default uh, so now um just to show you it's 
So I have two sync targets here uh, in the location workspace. If I show you, so on those sync targets, mainly I'm pointing to the basic uh, standard cube uh, API export. If I come back uh, and I have so the virtual workspace for each of, of those. Now, if I come back, my user uh, workspace, I will bind this as uh, location workspace that contains my sync target um, and create a first, I bind with the name West and create a placement here um, that will only select uh, the sync targets with the region West. Uh, couldn't find, sorry, so. Oh, no, <laughs> I thought I was. Ready? What's the point here? Is it a timing issue where you don't have the placements APIs yet? But they're yeah, there. Maybe. Uh, maybe just because. Right. See if they're there now. Yeah. Maybe. No. No. no uh, that's. Not... Nope. Yeah. I would just create it because maybe I, I just messed up this um, workspace. It's an old one. Uh, so, that's not easy. Just... Okay, so now that's it. Bind. So I will bind another one. So obviously my, my user workspace was uh, uh, right. uh, So I will bind, bind another placement as well for the east location. And now, yes, here I have this deployment coordinator uh, running, the sinker for the east uh, sync target, the sinker for the West sync target. And KCP, of course, also running here. Now let me try to apply deployment and get deployments here. So for now, it, there is only one uh, deployment. It has been scaled up. Uh, and um, obviously, if we look here, directly on the east um, kind cluster, I'll find my deployment uh, with one deployment. And then if I look here, yes, here you can see that the deployment has been scaled with uh, one replica here. So now let me, uh, in KCP, scale the deployment. Uh, let's say to 11 and see that it's being um, reconciled on the physical clusters. The pods are started and then it's reconciled back by the uh, coordination uh, controller um, to, um, to KCP. And now if I... Um, Config, if I look there, I have six replicas for this um, deployment here, the test on the west physical cluster. And if I go on the east physical cluster, I have five replicas. So I mean, they're really spread. And the deployment um, coordinator uh, that I, for of which I showed you the, the, the code, mainly summed up the uh, available replicas and in fact everything that is in in the status and created the dedicated status in the upstream um, resource so that's mainly it maybe French. can you show the I, I think you what have annotations in the sure 
Type it in KCG just to see what those look like. Exactly. Sure. Here, yeah, so here, um, div syncer internal kcp.dev, and that's the ID here, the K of the sync target. And here you have um, JSON map, uh, and you have a number of fields. By default, for now, it's only the status because it's only the status which is summarized and and you know brought back to overridden in fact and brought back to um, um, KCP uh, from the sinker. But in the future, it could be. I mean, the all the the logic is generic. That means that uh, in the future, you would have the ability to override or customize or you know per GVR or per coordination controller the various fields that you want to summarize to bring back from the syncer to kcp on syncer views so if we think of services for example typically the cluster ip which is uh, set um, uh, when the service is created on the physical cluster it would be very interesting to bring that back uh, on the syncer view so you would have a, a distinct field here you know typically spec.cluster ip something like that and and then from this, a coordination controller could grab the various um, IPs of every service uh, that the bar, each, uh, no, the IP that the service has on every sync target and build its own possibly IP through some sort of scupper, for example, setup or anything like that. So that's that's completely for now. Of course, we have a basic implementation, as you saw also. Uh, for the transformations from upstream to downstream, um, we have those annotations here, exper experimental spec diff. But that's really the default. In the future, the idea that you would be able to define transformations from, for example, through CEL, that would be related to, uh, you know, linked to the coordination controller. So every coordination controller could define its own transformation that would be applied by the virtual workspace. But for now, we have something that you know basically works for the simple cases just by letting the coordination controller, you know, stick this annotation for every single target. Uh, yes, Paolo. Yes, I have one question. Why <clears throat> this uh, field is called diff, right? Are you differing, some, differing something from something? You mean the first two annotations, right? Yeah, bringing yes, those, those ones. Yes, that's, right? that's a very good question. In fact. Um, it's something I've been thinking today that, you know, I should probably rename. Uh, the thing is that, you know, it has to be renamed. It's it's an implemented deta implementation detail, sorry. But it also has to be renamed on the cube fork. I can explain that after. Um, it's quite historical, in fact. It's a bit legacy. Initially, it was a JSON patch, um, the diff of the whole object between the sync of view and the main um, view. That was the first uh, try, uh, you know, months ago for this work. But obviously, uh, it didn't work because it was not possible to, you know, maintain those view uh, in a consistent consistent way. And then we switched to uh, a diff, which is not really a diff, you know, per se, but mainly uh, overridden fields. You have the name of the field or, you know, the path of the field. And then it's it's still a diff, you know, in an abstract way. It, it gives the what is different in the sinker view from uh, the main object, but the the way it's applied is mainly just that those fields will be overridden on top of the current value of the upstream object. Does it make sense? So probably we should. I mean, we could rename this annotation here and give a better name, like you know, sinker view or overridden sinker overridden fields or I'm, I mean, I'm not very good at names but we could obviously change that okay. it has to sorry it has to be managed by by the uh, the cube fork as well for a small detail is that we want to be able to update this annotation when you modify when you update both the spec or the status so for all the objects that have a status sub resource we have to enable the fact that this 
uh, annotation can be changed even if you only update the status. Uh, yes. When I saw diff the first time, it kind of threw me off because I thought you had some kind of main view and then you are just reporting what the difference instead of saving maybe a storage space or something like that, right? Because maybe only one or two fields or some few things change. So you have like, you know, your main thing and you just report diff. So you save basically storage space. That was my initial thought when I saw this, but it looks like it's the full status, right? Well, we, uh, yeah, well, for now, yes, but in fact, in the future, I'd say yes and no. There is no, I mean, there is no strong requirement that it would be the whole, the whole status. I mean, to make it simple for now is the status, but you could completely say that you want only to bring back status dot available replicas, for example. You know, it would be part of those what I mentioned previously, the fact that every coordination controller in the future will be able to customize the way fields are summarized, are brought back from the sinker uh, to uh, to the sinker view in KCP. This is what uh, it's called in the in the code and in the design, the summarizing rules. That's the list of the paths to each field that you want to bring the sinker to bring back from downstream to the sinker view upstream so clearly it could be in the future that we decide that we want to bring back according to gvs to the type of objects that we want to bring back specific only specific fields of the status and then only those fields would be um, um, brought back to kcp and obviously this would gain also some some uh, memory of storage okay thank you um steve frederick i don't know i think which one it's in first. order so frederick was first okay uh thank you so uh, yeah uh, that looks uh, very good david uh, i wanted to ask you about the dependencies uh, like uh, secret and config map uh would they get uh, replicated on uh, each uh, physical cluster in, uh, at some point yes so i mean if i understand the question correctly because the sound was not very uh, loud, but um, the dependency between resources in terms of syncing, um, that's not something that is taken in account at this layer. Um, here we are re really uh, at the um, single resource, individual resource level, but uh, probably at least in some of those use cases, that would be something managed by coordination controllers. If I take the example of the storage, for example, typically um, a coordination controller, one or two coordination controllers, would take care of following the link between the PV and the PVC and uh, syncing the PVs um, at this, uh, on the same uh, sync target where the PVC is. So you would have coordination controller which has the knowledge of, you know, um, the specific logic for the specific type of resource. And those coordination controller would drive how the resources would be synced and how and when they would be synced and possibly if they need to be transformed to, to keep some consistency. Typically in the case of PVC to PV, we have to maintain the links between both uh, in a consistent way, both upstream and downstream. And for this, we need to uh, use transformations. Does it answer? But it's it's a higher layer on top of these primitives. Okay. Uh, I have a second question, if you don't mind. So there are a few resources like, like a config map, secrets that, that uh, don't really have a status, uh, and people also develop uh, custom resources uh, this way. Uh, would there be a, a generic mechanism for, for them so there is a only to uh, yes in fact the fact that um you know there are two things uh, for the upstream to downstream syncing you could completely decide to add this uh, annotation you know to add a transformation annotation even on a config map and sync what well, a single config map sync it with different you know values or updated values on every sinker according to the sinker that's that works as well for that 
as for the uh, the status there is nothing that requires the status uh, in all this work we just take this in account and we know um, when we summarize a value from downstream to upstream we have to know if this value is part of the status of or not because then you have to you to call update status instead of update but that's the only thing if you decide you want you know you have a config map or a secret and you want to or any other object that does, doesn't have a status and you want to bring back some um, some field from downstream to upstream the only thing is that you had you would add this field, the description of this field in the summarizing rules I mentioned previously. But it, it doesn't need to be the status, it can be something else. I mean, in the future, in full generality, of course, in the implementation, we started with the basic case, uh, which is envisioned in TMC, which is mainly um, uh, sync uh, the spec and, and bring back the status. But it's, it's not limited to that. Does okay. it make sense? So, yeah. yeah, but uh, so, so, uh, you would still need to, to, to build this rule if you have a custom resource with no, no status. You, you don't want anything sync back. You just want it to, to be replicated on a, a, a plus. So you would still need to, to build something. I mean, by default, if you have a custom resource, uh, it, 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 it would work. You can define your transformations for downstream to upstream. And possibly you have nothing to bring back uh, in a sync view. Uh, you know, if it's only some information that you want to bring back. If you have a status on your customer source, then by default it will be brought up uh, because it's it, these are the default summarizing rules uh, at, that we started with. And in the future, as soon as we introduce the APIs to uh, allow customizing those you know, summarizing rules, you would be able to even bring back a spec field from your CRD, from the, from uh, uh, your, your customer source, from the syncer to, to KCP. I mean, it's, it's completely open, in fact. Uh, do I answer this time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need to, to, to have a deeper look. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Steve, I think it was you. Uh, you mentioned that uh, there's a, a carry in the cube fork that updates annotations uh, irrespective of whether spec or status is changing. And I'm wondering if you can uh, talk about why that's necessary and whether or not that uh, like at first blush, that would double the amount of writes happening when status updates occur, right? Um, yes. So that's mainly. Um, so uh, I mean, I, I mean, as a start, or maybe in, uh, I'd say that it's only for this annotation. I mean, it's really only for this annotation. So it's not a, a, a general mechanism where we allow this, uh, you know any sort of annotation to be modified at the same time. So, but for this annotation, since, you know, everything is done in those transformations in the virtual workspace, those transformations are done completely on the fly. So that means that when you do an update status uh, from the sinker, the sinker, for the sinker, it's completely transparent. It just thinks it updates the status. What I don't want is to, you know, double the, um, is that when you update the status on the object, it would be consistent at the time you have at, at the time the sinker re, um, receives the you know uh, the return of the update status call. The upstream object should be consistent. So any um, other um, third party component and especially the coordination controller, if if it would try to get the sinker views for this object looking into the into the annotation it should find the status that had been updated by the sinker so i really want to update those two things at the same time so 
I guess it, are you changing like the registry? Uh, how? No, 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 it's it's uh, it's it's quite an old. Uh, I mean, a change we we had discussed uh, some months ago, I think, uh, when testing uh, the 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 transformations. You know, with with the previous round, and it's mainly in the um, strategy of the CRD uh, registry. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's in the strategy that you 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 man manage that and you know drop the annotation when you are when you are on the statue sub resource, and here we we just drop all the annotation uh, apart from this one. I mean, and this so, so it works only for CRDs. Well, well everything the thing, is CRD and well the thing is that uh, in KCP everything is CRD. You know. Thank you. Uh, apart um, from from config maps and secrets, which don't have statues, several sources. So, I'm that's... a little concerned about that uh, that that patch. Um, that <laughs> seems very uh, deep and low level. Um, I quite agree, and at the same time, very uh, limited. But is it? Uh, uh, I can't remember. Will that will that change the generation? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure I uh, understand your question. Do, do changes to annotations change the object generation if one exists? Mike, do you know? I don't think so. Uh, it depends, again, on the registry. Uh, but the typical code is looking at changes in the spec. Just the spec, OK. Maybe we should think about if it's possible to implement this without that patch. I feel like the uh, can I also divergent add source of truth is unfortunate, but at the same time, if it's, I don't know, we'd have to think about adversity here. Um, can I also ask, just on this point, why was it done at that the registry strategy level instead of in the handler for the um, update operations? Uh, I mean, <laughs> that's quite old, uh, uh, an old change. But obviously, if I, I mean, as far as I remember, because it's a month ago, um, the goal was to do it precisely at the place where uh, annotations are dropped. When you, I can show you, maybe. Uh, so not sure I understand. Maybe I'm missing some points. I, I don't know. I mean, we could discuss where the most appropriate place is to do it if we are doing it in Kubernetes. <laughs> I agree with Steve. Let's try and find a way not to do this in Kubernetes. Yeah, I mean, I'm open to any other options. At the time we discussed uh, that, I, if I remember correctly with Stefan, um, I was not aware of other options. Well, if you define the semantics uh, not as a diff, but as a, you know, here's what it is, right? Then you don't have to change it when the um, the upstream object status changes. I, I I don't need to change it when the it's not really a diff as I explained. It's just overridden fields. But the whole point is that when the thinker does just one call, which is update status. I'd like this to be directly reflected um, in the annotations, but without uh, well, there is <sighs> yeah, I think we I mean, as I said, oh, it, I think or, I may, maybe I misunderstood what you said. So yeah, um. When, when you said something about the, the sinker thinks it's only updating the status. So what you're really saying is the issue is that in the kube API machinery, when yes. you update the status, you're doing a write to the status sub-object, and that can't, that can't update the annotations in the main object. Yes, that's exactly it, you know. And I want, okay. I mean, what the, the so, corresponding of, sorry, yes. This ahead. limitation is something I've noticed you know, as a pain point in upstream Kubernetes, you know, maybe the right way to approach this is to address that pain point in upstream Kubernetes. 
Yeah, it's at least worth uh, proposing it and seeing what the reception would be. Yeah, on the other hand, I mean, in the in the current case, it's really related to, you know, the very specific semantic of storing a sinker specific view. I mean, doing things in a way that the sinker thinks it's doing an update status and it, and from his point of view from the sinker world it's effectively an update status right but, uh, but finally but my it, point it, is that it's an instance of a broader problem right i've come across this problem not writing sinkers i've come across this problem with completely different controllers yeah yeah i i, I can understand that <laughs> if i remember the historical conversations were about uh potentially uh sharding spec and status into different parts of the key space and different storages and stuff which never happened um i think maybe also worth thinking through uh like what is the actual guarantee that's required here and Yes, and you're right, Steve, that um, possibly we have to revisit that uh, now that, you know, things have been precised a bit more about this, the, the, the real content, you know, of this annotation. As I said, initially, it was a real complete diff from, you know, between, between the, the, the uh, sinker object and, and the, the upstream object. Uh, but that was not really maintainable, you know, uh, for more than just a demo. But I guess are we? So we're looking at which deployment are we looking at on the screen right now? Is this one of the ones downstream or upstream? No, no. This this one is upstream. You know, okay. this one is upstream, and this is when uh, up to here. Uh, where is it now? Sorry. Yes. And when the, when that sinker makes that call yes. to update status, does it actually change the status, or does it just get interrupted on the way there? Yeah, that's a more a bit more. I mean, not tricky, but a bit more, a bit less simplistic than that, in the sense that there is also a mechanism of what I we called promotion that we had discussed with with that with Stefan. Uh, also some month ago um, in the sense that by default if you have only one sync target the plan is not that you would have uh, this full status in an annotation and then finally uh, your coordination control you would need a coordination controller to copy the content of this annotation to the real status so when uh, the, you do an update status from the sinker and there is only one sync target the virtual workspace knows that and then the uh, value is effectively promoted to the real status but you still and instead of having the complete status here you would have the flag you know hash hash promoted or something like that i mean i don't know the value exactly but so in some cases when you have only one thing target which is still uh, at least when you have only one location one placement sorry it's still the the typical case According to the summarizing rules, when it makes sense, once again, the value of the status would effectively be promoted to um, to the status through an update status. But in other cases, um, we would. Uh, so, I mean, according to how it works now, possibly we have, to, as you said, you have we we could revisit the the real requirement and maybe some in most cases change the update status, which is called on the delegate client from the sync virtual workspace to do a simple update, in fact. That's, that might be possible as well. Yeah, if the only durable outcome of that update status is a change in the annotations because the real status gets summarized later anyway, that seems like. Yes, but that's not in all the cases. So we still have to you yeah. know, think a bit. But anyway, I just wanted to say, uh, I was surprised to hear that it might be worth spending some time thinking about it. Yes, surely. I mean, it's it's really the first um, implementation of the all that and and expected to to be completed in the future. Any other question?
Okay, so I'll stop sharing. Thanks, David. That was really cool uh, and a very good conversation and discussion for everybody. So thanks. Um, I am not seeing anything else on the agenda. So I'm happy to go through the new items in the project and just do some new issue triage here. We have got 17, I think I'm in the right one. Let me share my window here. All right, so um, this first one is, oh, right, the potential crash in here. Um, Kyle, it's been a couple weeks since I've thought about this. Is this um, still an issue, or did you track down if we were actually panicking or and crashing, or what, what's the latest on this one? Oh, it's been a couple days since I've thought about this. What was it? Um, I think that we mitig we mitigated the crash. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it's as big as an urgent as an issue, but I think there's still an open item of we could potentially fix the issue in cube because there's a spot where it does panic, but it would have to be fixed. I think it would need to be fixed upstream, I would imagine. I mean, it didn't have to be, but it seems like that would make sense because it's upstream as well. But I don't know if it's worth doing at this point since we've mitigated the main issue. Yeah, I'm sort of tempted to close this, but um, Sergius, go ahead. Yeah, as far as I recall from the stack discussion thread, one thing we wanted to make sure is that we have proper uh, panic handling set up um, in a way that like the panics don't bubble up in the way that it makes the process crash. I think that's maybe at least something that we should ensure and make sure that we have the right hooks in the code before we close out this issue finally. Well, I'm happy to close this one and replace it with a new one about making sure that we um, yeah. don't crash. Yep, sounds good. Okay. Uh, panic. Root cause of the panic in KCP has been mitigated. Closing this issue and we'll finally want to ensure. Having panic handler configured so we don't crash. I will um, actually, Sergius, would you mind filing the new issue? Yes, definitely. I can do okay. Thanks. Uh, we have a flake around this one. I'm going to put it in next yeah this one oh sorry I, I i don't think we really need to go through it i think just yeah, um, yeah. Sure. i'm going to put it in next flakes so i'm just going to stick in next um, yeah yeah knowing that probably uh, it, it it is probably fixed but you know let's wait a bit and if we don't see it back uh Sergius, did you get a chance to look at this PR? Um, no, but I can have a look. All right, let me. I just wanted to say that it looks like something I should have a look at. Yeah. So let me assign this one to you. Oh, it is assigned to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll add you as a reviewer. Yes, yes. And this is in progress or in review. Uh, Nolan, I think you were looking at this, right? Yes. Starting to. All right. Uh, folks, if you uh, wouldn't mind, I, I know it, it, we haven't really been doing this a ton, but if you can just flip the statuses for anything that uh, you're looking into, that'd be awesome. Already, this is in progress. Uh, I think the 
bunch, let's see, this one, I made the repo. So I did not move that yet. So let me put this in progress. Uh, we do still need an enhancement proposal template. I think probably basing it off the Kubernetes kep template would make sense. Um, I'm going to put this in the backlog. And if anybody is interested in helping out here, please um, either assign this to yourself or reach out and we'll get you helping out. I'll do the same with this one. All right, invalid permission claim. This is basically, it's a fake, uh, fake error. So when you expose export the permission claim, by default, it exports the native types. Yeah. Like, but when we're comparing them for identity and wrong, we don't take into account that there is these invisible native types, and it throws an error when the permission claim mismatches with export. Uh, do you have a fix uh, or uh, no. time, or do you if want I somebody think, else? If, if people agree this is legit, I can work on that. Uh, I need some time to process, uh, so I'm, I'm happy to look through this after the meeting. Um, like, uh, maybe I think Nolan. Links, links should be enough to more information yeah. if something ping me. And if you if you agree that this is a legit bug, just assign it to me and I can work on that. All right, I'm going to assign it to myself for right now so that I take a look at it, and then I'll flip it over to you. Um, cool. Turning off root compute workspaces causes a pileup of error logs. Uh, couldn't get server API group list. That's discovery. Uh, David, can I assign this to you to um, Del? Actually, I don't know. Um, yes. I can have a look on maybe Jen as well. Um, Yeah, I don't. I mean, the, so the HTTP log ones are not errors. The memcache one is a discovery bit, and mm. something is trying to, I'm guessing, get discovery from root compute and isn't able to. I think it's the um, the sinker management controller. Yeah, that uses that as the source of truth for what needs to get synced. That'd be my guess. So I, I'm going to send this to David and, and when you all have a chance. Oh, let's get it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we definitely want to split the TMC code out. Um, And this is going to be next. And um, I think there's probably going to be multiple of us at least coming up with the plan and then implementing. Uh, go ahead, Nolan. Uh, just for clarification, is next uh, currently 010 or 011? Uh, doesn't necessarily mean 010. No. Okay. Like, th this, this this particular epic is definitely not 0 10. That's what I thought. I just wanted to clarify. We haven't really been doing any sort of formal process around the different columns uh, for the statuses. I mean, typically, if we were doing sprints and Kanban style, like one or both, you'd, you know, when you finish a task, you would go look what's in next and you'd move next to in progress. Um, maybe we need to get rid of some of our status columns or be a bit more diligent in how we're using this. But basically, the goal here is to get things, uh, review everything that's in new. If it is legitimate that eventually at some point we want to do it, it goes into backlog. Um, for things that 
I know we want to do sooner than just eventually. I'm putting them into next is kind of what I'm doing right now. Okay, cool. That works. Uh, this is all workload stuff. So they're all part of that same epic. Next. 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 I guess I can just do it from here. And missing sub resource permission for pods when generating. Yeah, um, you have a PR already, so we can. We do that in in progress even i think and, no, uh, not I for this know. one yet uh, i think david okay. not for this one um mm -hmm. but it's part of uh the tmc um an epic so we will yeah I, I i would yeah we, we can complete it uh later on it, it's part of the yeah, this of the epic i mean i would I'm tempted to say just do this regardless of the feature flag because there's not really any way that you're going to be able to client side from the cube control KZB sync plugin. You're not going to be able to tell if the feature flag's enabled or not easily. So, anyways, um, I put it in the backlog and that's it for here. So, yeah. uh, we've got like a couple minutes left. Any last minute topics? If not, Happy to give you all a few minutes before your next meeting if you've got one. All righty. Well, have a great Tuesday and rest of your week, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.